Well, good evening, Scrapper and Scrapettes. So these giant things actually come out of uh, the new front load washer and dryers. Got a couple of them here. And uh, I ripped apart a couple of these before. A um, bunch of different ways you can do it. Guess we can get dirty while we do it too. Hmm. Hmm. So, whole bunch of ways. Couple of ways. So let's look into this. Let's look into these crazy things. Let's get this nice copper off of it. All right. So, as you can see, let's go with this one here that I didn't start on yet. You got these little plastic pieces right here in the end. Okay. If you want to just pull it off manually, little by little. Not really little by little, but. Get it started. Get one of them to get these started here. So it's basically, you know, just grab a piece of copper right here. Break it, cut it, whatever. And uh, we can pull it right off like this. But the problem that would have is that once that top layer is gone, it starts to get a little little tricky and wants to just keep getting hung up even though we snapped off all these little little, little tabs right here you know I kind of like doing a solenoid basically you know break the plastic off the end of the solenoid and just pull the copper right off but uh so we can do it this way and as you can see it can take a little bit once you get a rhythm or you got a system, yeah, you can go right down the line. If you can get it to stay in one place. Hopefully you guys can, oh yeah, you can still see that. Let's position it a little better. Here we go. Oops. Started an extra one. I found doing it this way works pretty good. It's less noisy. Uh, less messy. Um, it's all on how you want to do it, actually. You want to take a little extra time and have yourself a little therapy. See, you can get that nice spot right there. Look at that. It's just coming right off of there. Let's bring you back a little bit here. Bring you back a little bit. Let's zoom in on that a little. Can we see it? Yeah, we can. Uh, get a little creepy. It's all right. We're allowed. So, well, like I said, even then, it still gets to that point where it wants to get hung up on the plastic. But the plastic right here is actually really tight in with the, with the, the steel iron. Well, like I said, once you... I found doing this works really good. I just give it a little hit as I give it a little tug with the other hand. And, uh, I don't know. I kind of find it kind of relaxing. Kind of a little monotonous, but relaxing. It brings it all the way over to that one. So we're just going to cut that quick. Yeah, we got a lot to wrap up here. There's this quite a bit of footage here. Quite a bit. So that was, like I said, that was just two of those legs or sections. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, I believe it was, uh, I can't remember who it was. I just did one of these not too long ago. So 
so many YouTubers out there. And uh, get ourselves a nice bit of copper. Nice little bit of copper right there. Adds up. I'll add that to the little pile there. Let's bring you back out a little bit. Whoa, no, go back in. Ooh, let's bring you out. There we go. Bring you out. Bring it out. So, another thing you can do, too, is like on some Transformers, cut this with a cut with a grinder, uh, cut and wheel, get a really thin blade, and just notch it. Kind of like you do with a ceiling fan. And then you just pop it right up on the other side. But you're going to want to make sure that you're pretty secure to where it's not going to dance. Normally you can lay it flat. Uh, we got the grinder in here? Yeah, I think we do. The all hearing protection on. And, uh, This way, it can be very messy. You just try to flip it over. Which one? There it is. And uh, now you gotta have something to put all the little pieces of copper in. Let's grab the bucket. Grab yourself a. Uh, small screwdriver or something it's funny I had 50,000 flatheads and I can't find any of them that's magnetic Just throw it down the side here I'm off on the other way. Like I said, I seem to be struggling. And I'm going to drop. See? Huh? Pieces of copper flying everywhere now. Like I said, I kind of kind of like the other way. Kind of like, uh, kind of like doing it this way. Plus, it's not as messy. I don't know. Must have dropped three or four pieces on the floor. And, uh, I don't know. Like I said, I wanted to leave. I wouldn't have thought if I got like $20, $30 worth of copper on my floor. See, now I lost my rhythm. Like I said, it, it, it all depends on how you want to do it. Uh, I think if you just go ahead, buzz them all, lay it on a flat surface. Right now, sorry, I see I got too much junk right now. And I'm just too lazy to put it away at the moment. Haven't been feeling too well lately. Uh, I'm kind of under the weather. So, feeling a little better t this afternoon. So, trying to get back to things, get back to doing stuff. See, I'm going to do this right here, just because we're in the next one. Yes, you got lucky. And pull that right off like a solenoid. Then you get to that point. It doesn't want to work anymore. Oh, I think I got my rhythm back again. There we go. It can take a little time to do these. But... So, that's what I'm working on. 
anyone has any other suggestions they would like to do on, on how they feel would be a good way to empty these out comment down below and while we're at it please hit that like button share us out comment down below we'll take your suggestions or email is in the description hit us up let us know what you think yeah let us know what you think try not to get too long because then you can't get into it uh also to be careful when you're wrapping this up that you don't do it too tight on your hand then you can't get the copper off then you got to cut the copper off your own hand so let's try not to do that doesn't have to be pretty just have to get it wrapped up it's all gonna get squished anyways a little twist to keep it from unraveling there we go there's the other pieces from that there do that all and i'm gonna continue with this all right so let's try other couple things let's go back to the grinder uh i got two of them i can mess with here so yeah that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and mess with that. Give you guys an aerial view. There we go. Give everybody a little more light. Let's do this. All right. Scrapper and scrap heads. To make things a little bit more interesting, uh, I went ahead and cut every single one. And... Uh, as you can see, they're all cut. I had that recorded, but guess what? The camera said, no, you did not record. So, yeah. So, I am a little upset about that, but what are we going to do? It's nothing we can do. So now we're just going to sit here. We're going to try to use a really sharp punch. So I can get in there without stabbing myself. I tried a really thin screwdriver, but that didn't want to work. The thing is, is that I noticed that, uh, as you can probably hear, I can probably hear the blower in the, uh, well, the vent hood in the background. Ooh. I, uh, yeah. The smell of plastic is a wonderful thing. All right, that will. Now the little scrap tool didn't work. You know I mean? Problem is, is I had a really thin screwdriver, so I don't know what I did with it. But good screwdriver works. Can we see that? Yeah, we can. Okay. Come down this to see. Like I said, this is the bad thing about when you cut it down the side is I don't know you don't cut all the way you know uh, you have copper loss not a lot but now you get all these little pieces drop them on the floor like I just did I had a few go flying when I was cutting. So yeah, it can it can be kind of messy. It's, as I'm talking to you from the floor, picking up the copper that I dropped. Get another one to do. I don't think I'm going to do uh, do this routine again. Said I wish I could find my really thin screwdriver uh, or actually an ice pick would be fantastic. Let's try this guy. And small Phillips head. Oh yeah, here we go. So 
So, Jewelers Phillips head. That's what I'm using. Looks like we're just gonna pick it up and stick it in the middle here. Yeah. I'm gonna pick it up and stick it in the middle. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'll be cutting it that way again. Honestly, I'm getting a little irritated. I'm getting it off. <clears throat> That's for sure. But dropping it on the floor again. you guys can see this. Yeah, looks like you can. That's a good thing. Did I forget this one? No. So, if you get a hold of one of these, I am going to let you figure it out your own. Oh, by the way, make sure you got copper ones before you go and you do all this. Uh, I did run into an aluminum one. which was really not fun to find. Really upset me when I found an aluminum one. And because, you know, I didn't check it before I stopped cutting it. And it was very upsetting. So, just amount of coffee going on in there. This is a, uh, what's this? One pound coffee can. So, I'm going to continue on that. So that's copper falling everywhere. I've already uh, did the damage and now I gotta, now I gotta pay the price. Try to pick it right up and put it in the can. Stop moving the can. Just pick up the small pieces on the floor afterwards. Just kind of hoping the other video didn't look bad. Thought it was going to be a pretty cool one. What are you doing on your evening, Scrapper and Scrap Bits? Sitting at home, just got done eating, watching TV, relaxing with the kids. Our kids are all grown up giving us grandkids. And we got some wonderful, wonderful kids giving us some beautiful grandchildren. Nothing wrong with that at all. Finish this up, and then we'll uh, we'll actually wait up, and see how much we end up really getting for copper. See if it's uh, worth anybody else's time that you know wants to take the time to do this. Like I said, I do a lot of this for yeah. Relaxation, relaxing. The extra money good? Oh yeah, it is. I'm not gonna complain about a few extra pesos in the pocket. 
Not at all. It helps uh, scrapping we do helps pay for some of me and my wife's adventures that we like to do. Uh, hopefully, the motorcycle one of the motorcycles will be back on the road by the weekend. It's the game plan, anyways. And uh, yeah, that back on the road. Get riding again. I'm going to start tearing apart the wife's motorcycle. Uh, she's got a lot of rebuilding we got to do on hers. We already got the exhaust. we got the tires. Just going to get on there, get it done. We got her some defenders. We're going to get a lot of stuff for her bike. And then, of course, a coat of paint. I don't know if her bike will be back on the road this year, but we'll definitely be riding at least one of them. So, that is our game plan. We have a lot of family that rides. So, it's good to have family and friends to ride with. It really is. Sometimes you just want to get out on the bike on your own and just take right off. Luckily enough, me and my wife live close enough to the Blue Ridge Mountains and beautiful motorcycle trails up through there. Oh, not trails, but roads that are very windy and very nice, comfortable. Pick back, yeah, find a little little hole in the wall diner, have some good food. It's usually where you can find the best food too, is in those little mom and pop dives on the side of the highway. You know, nobody knows about, you know, unless you, unless you ride on motorcycles, because those areas, uh, they have restrictions on vehicles because the roads are so tight and so windy that during, especially this time of the year, up right up and through, believe it or not, right through October into November, uh, we got a lot of motorcycles on the road down here. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of accidents happen, unfortunately. People just need to be, you know, careful out there. So, if you are a rider, please be careful. Let's keep, uh, let's keep the rubber side down. Let's keep an eye out for, uh, you know, got people on cars out there too, you know, that are very good behind the wheel. Just, you know, we do have that occasional rider that shouldn't be riding. Or needs to ride more carefully. Let's let's say that. Riders out there that need to be more careful. It's not always the SUV that causes the accident or the car or the truck. This is actually going now that I got a rhythm down. Figured out its weak point. I can just, whoops, I guess I didn't cut all the way through on that one. Yeah, it's like a ceiling fan. You gotta know if you cut all the way through or not. And I am gonna say I didn't. Not if I'm pulling off long pieces like this. Copper flying, copper flying. I'm committed. So, I'm gonna get it, I'll come back to it. Let's get the ones that we know we can do. Uh, that one pound can's filling up. 
Oh, I'm shooting copper. That one almost got me. I should have my six glasses on. You should. Yeah, coming for me. Flying copper again, guys. Yeah. Ow, copper needles. Yes, we must always watch out for the copper needles. Alright, there it is. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's flying. Who's in the next one? Oh, yeah. See, now I'm getting the rhythm. Now I'm getting an idea. Go right down the side. Rake it up. Use it like a wedge. I'm hoping you guys can see this. Oh, this would be a very wasted video. I think you can. Ugh. Ugh. It makes a room in there. Squish it. And that will all go into the nether. Uh, into the nether. Yeah, into the nether. Uh, into another container that will go into the number two bucket. Uh, which, by the way, we had to start another number two bucket. The other one is full. Which is awesome. Uh, I don't think I weighed it though. I still gotta, gotta weigh it. Put it in the log. Add it to the collection. And wait for the price of copper to go back up. It's starting to slowly climb again, but right now, I mean, number two copper is like 265. Uh, I tried calling the yard, uh, but they give you a recording on what their values are. And they're never right. And of course, they throw that little disclaimer in there. Prices can change. So, you can never really go by that. Yeah, you actually have to go in to find out what the prices are. And uh, if you want to know why I didn't take this one off, because that's the one I didn't cut. We will come back to that at the moment. Let's squish all this in there. Ugh. Fit it in there. If anybody remembers that video, that's from the New England area. Fit it in there. Ugh. Old V8 video commercial for an old video store. Gas, I, I can't remember. It, was, it started with the G. Bunch of Italians that would say, "Get it in there." And yeah, yeah, that was my time, kids. That was my time. So pop those out. Those electrodes there. What was that? Those might be brass. Yeah, it could be lead. Just trying to get them in there. Alright, so. We'll go back. Clean them up. Get those final pieces off of there. Where's this one stuck? Where's this one in? across that one. Maybe they're all woven together. Woven. Yeah, I lost my mojo again. So now I gotta find my mojo again. I don't know why I didn't cut this one. Play one more time. Hey guys, just sitting here. 
20 some odd minutes to watch me uh, play with copper. I didn't shut the scale off. And yeah, scale's uh, been on all afternoon. We're wrapping it up, guys. I know a little blinding. I get people dizzy. Get myself dizzy. Ta da! Alright. Doesn't weigh a lot, but let's see if we can weigh this on the, uh, see if we can get this on the scale here. Sorry about all the cords. Something me and my wife are doing. Can we see the scale? Ah, see if we can just hook it. What do you think, guys, without making a mess? All right. So, 2.64 pounds. 2.6 pounds. Now, we already know that these coffee cans do not weigh a lot. Maybe weighs, you know, a couple ounces for the can. So... Scrapper and scrap us, that's what we're playing with tonight. Please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share us out. We appreciate it. And if you can all see this ugly mug, let's do whatever it takes. Let's be safe out there and let's leave it better than we found it. Later. Back to the copper goodness. What? Later. <laughs>